Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is the beer quiche game. This is a common game used to teach pooling equilibrium, so it's a good one to cover. The game proceeds as follows. Nature begins by drawing player one as a real man with probability 0.6 and as a wimp with probability 0.4. Full disclosure here, I did not come up with these terms. The game originates from a 1980s paper. During that time, a book named Real Men Don't Eat Quiche was popular, and the setup of this game is an artifact of that. If you want to know more about it, I'll just put a link in the video description. In any case, player one sees his type and chooses whether to drink beer or eat quiche. Player two does not observe player one's type, but does observe his meal. Payoffs are as follows. A real man prefers drinking beer. After all, real men don't eat quiche. However, wimps find quiche delicious. Regardless, both types are self-preserving, so neither wants to get into a fight. Player one therefore gets two points for avoiding that fight, and one point for eating his preferred meal. Player two is a coward. She only wants to fight a wimp, and she gets one point for doing so. She also loses a point for fighting a real man, and receives zero for quitting. Putting that all together, we get this game here. And we have a simple question for the lecture. Is there a pooling equilibrium in which both types drink beer? If there is, we know that player one's actions must look like this. Already, we can see that solving this game will not be straightforward. The quiche strategy is off the path, and we must therefore deal with the messiness that comes along with that. Going back a couple of lectures, the next step to solve for a pooling equilibrium is to find the other player's best response to those strategies. Well, if player two fights after observing beer, she earns negative one 60% of the time and one 40% of the time. That works out to negative 0.2 in expectation. If she quits, she earns zero regardless. Zero is greater than negative 0.2, so she should quit. And that takes us here. The third step is to check whether the first player can profitably deviate. Remember, if either type has a profitable deviation, the strategies do not form an equilibrium. Half of this is easy. Consider a real man's potential deviations. At best, he earns two down below but he earns his best possible payoff of three by sticking to his equilibrium strategy. Therefore, he has no profitable deviation. The Wimp's case is more complicated. He currently earns two in equilibrium. If he deviates, he could earn one or three. Thus, to keep the Wimp from wanting to deviate, we need to make sure player two fights often. That would give the Wimp a payoff of one, which is less than the equilibrium payoff. This is where we need to begin manipulating the off-the-path beliefs. Maintaining the equilibrium strategies requires player two to fight after observing quiche. Thus, the question turns to which off-the-path beliefs make fighting rational. Keep in mind that we have a degree of freedom here. The strategy is off the path, so we are free to pick whatever beliefs we want. There are two different ways that we can accomplish this. The first is to use a belief that makes fighting the only optimal strategy. The second is a belief that makes player two indifferent between fighting and quitting, which would still allow her to optimally fight. The first of these cases is easier, so we'll start with that. Let P be the probability that player two believes as her posterior belief that player one is a real man after observing quiche. Then her expected utility for fighting equals p times negative one plus one minus p times one. Her payoff is a flat zero for quitting. Setting those two things equal to each other and solving for p, we see that fighting is strictly better when p is less than one half. This gives us our first class of perfect Bayesian equilibria. Both types pool on beer. Following beer, 
Player 2's posterior belief equals her prior belief. She responds by quitting, and then following quiche, player 2's posterior belief is any P less than one half. She responds there by fighting. Note that there are infinitely many of these equilibria. Any P less than one half works here. We can now move on to the second class of equilibria. This time, we look for off-the-path beliefs where player 2 is indifferent between fighting and quitting. The indifference case is something that new students often forget about, so make sure that you check for it in your own problems. Fortunately, we have already done the math to calculate the indifference condition. We just want the P that makes these utilities equal, rather than the P that makes fighting better than quitting. When P is exactly equal to 1 half, player 2 is indifferent. When player 2 is indifferent, she can fight as a pure strategy, or quit as a pure strategy, or mix between the two. But we still have a constraint. The wimp must not want to deviate. Let sigma be the probability player 2 fights. The wimp earns 2 for maintaining his beer strategy. If the wimp deviates, he earns 1 with probability sigma, and 3 with probability 1 minus sigma. We need to keep the wimp from deviating, so his utility for beer must be at least as large as his utility for quiche. That at least part is why we must use a weak inequality. Working through the algebra, we arrive at sigma greater than or equal to 1 half. We now have the second class of equilibria. Like before, both types drink beer. Also like before, following beer, player 2's posterior belief equals her prior, and she quits. The off-the-path quiche circumstance is different from before. Now player 2 has a belief exactly equal to 1 half. She then fights with probability at least 1 half. Again, this means that we have infinitely many equilibria. Any such sigma works here. Turns out that this game has another set of equilibria in which both types eat quiche. An exercise you can try on your own is to derive those equilibria. However, sustaining them requires some strange off-the-path beliefs. In a later lecture, we will formally define what strange means here, and show why the equilibria from this lecture are more plausible. But that is far down the road. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I hope to see you next time as we continue our lessons on perfect Bayesian equilibria. Take care.